Okay, so welcome to Control Systems Introduction, uh, Chapter 1. Control theory is the study of control systems, systems that control the behavior of other systems. In control theory, a system, usually called the plant, is analyzed awesome, uh, often and awesome with system dynamics. Then a control system is designed to control the behavior of the plant. A control system usually controls the plant via a controller that changes one or more of the plant's inputs. The plant's outputs are variables we would like to know and or control. A graphical representation of this, called a block diagram, is shown in figure 1-1. One, one. So we have a plant the behavior of which we would like to control. So we want to control at least some aspects of what's happening in the plant. Um, and we say the outputs of, those plant, of the plant, which could be maybe different positions of different objects or velocities of objects or forces within um, different objects, or it could be, you know, that was all mechanical. It could be electronic things, voltages, currents. Um, it could be fluid things, pressures, and uh, flow rates, thermal things, temperatures, and heat flow rates. Uh, and we, we want to control what these are, some aspects of this plant. And so what we do is we stick a controller on it, and we'll use control effort to control what the plant's doing. So we've got a, um, you know, maybe this is the controller is controlling a voltage to a motor or something like that, that will change the behavior of the plant in a way that we like or that we want. If a plant is mathematically modeled with sufficient accuracy, a controller can specify the plant's input, which is of course the controller output, to produce the desired plant output. Okay, so if you know what's going on in the plant really well, you can choose what the control effort should be such that your output is what you want it to be. This is called open loop control. However, most plants are not modeled well enough to do this. It is especially difficult to model outside disturbances like sudden jolts from being bumped and environmental interference. Moreover, small errors in modeling can accumulate over time. So say you uh, know with this voltage that you're going to have a position uh, uh, of some maybe object in your system um, that changes a certain way. Well, maybe there's a little bit of a bias in your model. It's slightly off, maybe even 1% off. Um, over time though, that can accumulate and uh, you could start off 1% off for a few seconds and then you're 2%, 3%. Suddenly you're very, very uh, significantly off from what you um, expect to the behavior of the plant to be. Uh, so um, this is very problematic and so we don't um, uh, rely typically on open loop control. Um, sometimes we do, especially if we don't care too much about the, the um, accuracy that we have on our output. But for these reasons, most control systems include feedback, measurements of the plant's outputs, as shown in figure one, two. Okay, so we have the plant's outputs and we're actually going to measure them. So this is called feedback. So we measure the outputs of the, of the plant and we feed them back and we'll do something within the controller there. Frequently the feedback is compared to a command. Okay, so the command is uh, what we are going to specify in order to make our output um, correct. So say we want the output to be um, five meters, the measurement changes that from five meters to maybe a certain voltage or um, maybe some uh, numerical value in a computer. Uh, the command then says, okay, I want that value coming out of the measurement to be, um, uh, so say it was a digital one that came in as five meters. Um, the command says, okay, I want it to be at five meters. 
uh, it's the actual output that we measured was four. And so therefore we can compute the difference here, assuming the measurement has a gain of one um, to be five minus four. So we have an error of one, okay? We take this error value and we give it to the controller. Now the controller operates not just in the dark, okay? Up here, the controller was operating in the dark. It didn't know what was actually coming out. Now it has an idea of what's coming out and it compares it to what we want that to be, okay? Uh, the, the controller then operates on this error and it gives us a control effort for the plant, just as before in open loop control. Um, but now we can adjust what the controller does based on what the output's actually doing right now. Determining how the controller should respond to effectively control the plant's output, in other words, to minimize the error, is the subject of much of control theory. There are several types of controllers using control theory and many adjustable parameters for each type. Determining which type of controller and parameter values are best for a given system are some of the primary tasks for the control engineer. There are design trade-offs to be made. Some controllers will be more expensive to implement than others because they will require more expensive hardware. And some controllers will perform better than others in ways we will explore in lecture 1.1, which is on performance.